because the church goes beyond the preacher the church goes beyond the choir the church goes beyond the position the church is all about Jesus Christ God bless you. Listen, we're going to hear another selection from these dynamic ladies, and then we're going to have the message for the hour. Amen. The feeling I have down inside I, It's hard to contain So I'll simply say Jesus, I love, I love you Millions of words can describe 
turn and just love on him on today. Just because he first loved you. Just because he first loved you. How many ever felt unloved? Just know that he already loved you. When you were just in your mother's womb, he loved you. He loved you enough to breathe air into you, to breathe life into you. So come on and love him on today. Oh, hallelujah. Come on. Let's say, Jesus, I love you. Jesus. brothers and sisters let's give God some virtual praise we thank God once again for Alnisa and Jocelyn and Regina blessing us this morning listen it's a praise party going on we are celebrating the goodness of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and I think there's no more appropriate saying than just tell Jesus I love you I love you listen last last Monday y'all spent money buying candies and pocketbooks, they call them pocketbooks or purses, which are called bags. Y'all done secured the bag on Monday, amen. And brothers, you got your new J's and all of that, but listen, and you told your boo or whoever it is, you told them I love you. Well, listen, listen, I, I know they might have done some stuff for you on Monday, but I need to let somebody know that seven days a week, 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, we serve a Savior that is constantly blessing us. And if anybody can give God praise, you can praise God because you serve an extravagant giver. Amen. Can I, this ain't, listen, this ain't even a message. But listen, when folk give expensive and extravagant gifts, they want you to know how much they pay for it. Amen. They don't want you to take it for granted, but I marvel at the fact that each and every day when Christ wakes me up, he is not hovering over me telling me, you know I woke you up this morning. You know I've got this sun shining for you. He just blesses me throughout the day. And so when I think of the goodness, you can fill in the rest of Jesus and all that he's done for me. I can't help but say hallelujah. Give God the highest praise. Amen. Amen. Listen, again, it's HBCU Sunday. We're celebrating HBCUs. Again, a hashtag Messiah Movement HBCU. If you went there, if you graduated, if you paid tuition, even if you went on a part-time basis and came back home because you couldn't afford it, listen, let the world know that we're supporting HBCUs today. There's a word that we have before we get to the word. Let's just go to God in prayer. Amen. God, we thank you for this time of worship. Thank you now for, for this word. We sit at your table waiting to be fed by you. God, provide us a word that will nourish us, sustain us, grow us into who you desire for us to be. I pray, dear God, for every person viewing this live right now, and some may even view it at a later time. Whenever they watch it, God, allow your word to go forth. Hide me. Hide me behind the cross. It's not about me, God. It's all about you. I I'm just the servant. God, you the chef. You, you and the uh, Christ and Holy Spirit, y'all work this up in the kitchen. I thank you for what, for what we're going to receive now. Have your way. Allow the fruit that comes from this. Have all glory go back to you. God, we thank you and we praise you. 
We ask your blessings now upon this word. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Listen, my brothers and sisters, we're continuing our theme this month, the many faces of love. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is our, our focus, and I want to call your attention this morning to verses 8 through 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 8 through 10. This is from the message translation. I love it. The message translation, it reads this way, love never dies. Inspired speech will be over someday. Praying in tongues will end. Understanding will reach its limits. We know only a portion of the truth, and what we say about God is always incomplete. But when the complete arrives, our incompletes will be canceled. Verse 9, but when the complete arrives, our incompletes will be canceled. This morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to share with you from this subject, you complete me. You complete me. On the campus of Tuskegee University, there is a statue of Booker T. Washington. It's a statue of Booker T. Washington standing over a slave. There is a blanket that is being removed that slave is sitting on agricultural apparatus along with holding a book. That, that statue was inspired by, by Booker T. Washington's desire to remove the veil of ignorance from the black people. And by removing that veil, by removing that veil and having both the book and the agricultural equipment, Booker T. Washington believed that the Negro, the Negro in these United States could prosper and flourish if both they were educated and they used their hands to work. My brothers and sisters, as we look in this or continue our discussion in this book, uh, this 13th chapter of 1 Corinthians, Paul is trying to remove the veil of ignorance and arrogance from the eyes of the Corinthian church. Throughout the verses thus far, Paul has made his argument that love must be prevalent beyond all of the other gifts that we possess. Whatever spiritual gifts we possess, Paul says love, love has to be the motivating factor, the motivating force of what we do. Remember, he begins in the first couple of chapters talking about prophesying and speaking in tongues and having knowledge. He returns to those same subjects in verses 8 through 10. But before he gets to the prophecy and the speaking in tongues and the knowledge, he first lets us know that love never fails. Love never fails. And doing a little more research about this whole, this whole line, love never fails, we, we, th there's an image of collapse. There is an image that Paul is saying that love never collapses. That love will always be standing. That there is nothing that will happen in this world where God's love for us will ever collapse. I thought about that, um, this whole collapsing. Uh, early part of this year, President Biden was, was making his way to Pennsylvania to promote his Build Back Better campaign. And that was building up the infrastructure. That was where federal dollars would be going to this country to build up the infrastructure, the, the bridges and the roadways. And it just so happened as he was preparing to fly to Pennsylvania, it was believed to be that one of the bridges that he would have possibly been crossing to make his speech to those, those citizens in PA, it collapsed. It literally collapsed. Cars, cars were on it. A bus was on it. And the bridge collapsed. After all the years <clears throat> of allowing individuals to be transported to and fro on this bridge, it gave way. After the years of being used, wow. After the years of serving, it eventually collapsed. 
How many of us have reached a collapsing moment? How many of us have collapsed from the burdens of this world, the cares of this world, the responsibilities of this world? How many of us have, have served and served, but eventually we give way? Everything in this world will eventually collapse. But Paul says, there is one thing that will never collapse, that will never fail, and that's God's love for us. And even if I am neglectful to God, and even if I am neglectful with my gift that God has given me, God's love still will not collapse in my life. And that ought to be a shouting point right now because some of us have not dotted every I and we have not crossed every T, but love still sustains us and undergirds us. And we don't ever have to be afraid of crossing whatever bridges God calls us to cross because we know that God's love will sustain us. I am here because God's love has sustained me. Through my heartbreak and through my heartache, through my disappointments and my letdowns, through my failures and my incompletes, God's love has sustained me. Paul makes this argument clear because the Corinthian church is focused on the gifts, the gifts of prophesying, the, the gifts of speaking in tongue, the gifts of knowledge. They have put more emphasis, wow, on the stuff than they have on love. Christ represents love. My brothers and sisters, we must always be reminded that whatever gift God bestows upon us to be used as we work in this kingdom, it must always be secondary to us focusing on the love that he has for us. My gift pales in comparison to Christ's love. What your, your gift, whatever that might be, it's a drop in the bucket when compared to the infinite riches found in the love of Jesus Christ. And so Paul's argument is this. Paul says, see, right now we're only operating with an incomplete model. God. Paul breaks down this incomplete model. Paul says, listen, listen, God has given the gifts of prophesying. God has allowed some to see into the future and speak about what will become. But Paul says, eventually, that will end. Paul says, the, 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 the joy we have and the spiritual ecstasy we have in speaking in tongues, that unknown language that is able to be interpreted by others, Paul says, as, 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 as great as that is, that will eventually come to an end. Paul says, and as much as you learn and as much knowledge as you acquire, eventually that knowledge will come to an end. I read a story recently about an individual who just received their 10th degree. They have about 10 degrees, different majors. They, they are a lifelong learner. They've got the degrees posted, declaring that they graduated with this and that. They've learned this and that, received masters and a couple of PhDs, a lifelong learner. And I thought about it, but what, what good is it to have the degrees? What good is it to have the knowledge, but no work? Booker T. Washington was, was, was expressing the fact that the Negro needed both knowledge and work. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 and, and that was one of the arguments that, that individuals had, some critics had with Booker T, because Booker T didn't, Booker T did not appreciate, he, did, he said the Negro had no business being in liberal arts, understanding the arts. No, Booker T thought that, that having education and using your hands to work would make the Negro, in his words, a success the Negro respected in this country. And, and his contemporary at the time, Frederick Douglass, took issue with that. I, I, listen, I'm not here to debate who is right or who is wrong, but, but I understand what Booker T was saying. Like, what good is it to gain all this knowledge and do nothing with it? 
Do y'all know some folk that's always quoting scriptures? I do. I do. They want you to know that they know the word. They want you to know that, that they can find, you know, John 3.16 is easy for them. They, they can quote Romans 8.28. They, they, they are constantly letting you know the scriptures. And I used to be impressed as a child, I'll be honest, and I, I used to aspire to that. But as I got older, I, be, I, I, I heard what they knew, but I wanted to make sure that how they acted and lived lined up with what they knew. For what good is it? I'm talking to some church people now. What good is it to come to Bible study and know all the scripture, but your heart ain't right? What good is it, Paul? I'm not, this is not me. This is Paul saying, what good is it to have all of that, but you don't have love? Paul calls it a, a clanging symbol. You just making noise. My brothers and sisters, God is challenging us, us this morning to, yes, appreciate the gifts of the Spirit. Appreciate prophesying and, and, and appreciate speaking in tongues. Appreciate acquiring knowledge, but please understand that with all of that, your understanding is still incomplete. Um, so it took me. I did not attend an HBCU. I attended Wright State University. And um, one of the things I did not know uh, that you could do in college that we could not do in elementary, junior high, and high school was that you could receive an incomplete. Yeah, just an I. That was a grade. I had never heard of I. I a, B, C. I was familiar with D <laughs> and, and even F, but, but I'd never heard of an I. And I was where if, if you, you, you started out, and for whatever reason, gosh, you just, you just dropped out. You, you didn't finish. You, you, you didn't come sit for the final. And I'll be honest, I'll be honest. If, if I can, I'll be honest. I am going to be honest. I'm sharing too much of my, my grades with y'all, but I'm going to keep it transparent. I learned in some instances an I, for me, was better than an F. I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about, but I've been there where I'm, 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 I'm halfway in the semester, and I know this ain't going well. And I know if I stick with this, I know I'm going to get an F. So maybe if I drop out now and take my I, can anybody shout over an I right now? I feel, I feel, OK. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to get the F that I failed. I attempted it, but I know what this result is going to be. So let me take this I and live again another semester. Now, it affected my GPA, but not like the F. I'm talking to somebody because Paul is saying, with all of the knowledge and with all of the tongues and with all of the prophecies that we have, it's still incomplete. We, we are still failing in terms of understanding who Jesus is. But Paul says in verse 10, but when Christ comes, you'll be made complete. I used to think that having a degree would complete me. I used to think that by having a spouse would complete me. I used to think that having a little money in my pocket or having a newer automobile, you fill in the blank, living in a residence, moving to a specific city, that you would be complete. You joined organizations. You join Masonic lodges and fraternities and sororities, thinking that they would make you complete. Watch this. You join certain churches, thinking that by having a membership there, under that pastor, it would make you complete. But I need somebody to understand this morning that we are all incomplete and will be incomplete until, Paul says in verse 10, that we come face to face with the one who died for us. So right now, I'm just a walking eye. That's who I am. I'm just a walking eye in this world. I'm incomplete, but I'm not ashamed of my incompleteness. This is what I've learned. I was digging into this this week because I realized that the sermons that I preach are incomplete, that the songs that we sing 
are incomplete. That the service that we give is incomplete. It's incomplete because we're only operating from a little knowledge of what we've gained. We don't know all there is to know. Paul says you won't know all the prophecies, but they'll come to an end. All the speaking in tongues and all of the knowledge you have about God and Jesus, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, all of that, it's incomplete. You won't have that true understanding until you meet Jesus face to face. And until then, everything that we do is incomplete. Now, now the argument then is, so, so let, what should we do? And some just decide, well, since I'm incomplete, I just ain't going to do nothing. No, no, no. There was a couple classes I remember in particular. I knew I was going to get that incomplete, and I knew that I had to, I had to, I had to, gra- I had to pass it to graduate. And so I, what I started doing, I took my incomplete, but I started preparing even at mid-semester for the next semester. Somebody will catch it later. You, you, you. Listen, math was not more forte, and I needed to pass this one math class. And so I took my incomplete mid-semester. But even though I, I stopped going to class, I kept studying for the next semester so that when I started the next semester, I was prepared. I had already prepared myself. I wish I could preach this thing. I'm preaching right now, and we're living right now, but it's incomplete. But the life that I'm living, I'm living it for my next semester. Somebody will catch it later. I'm living not for right now, but I'm living for what's about to come. I'm preparing my life for when I come face to face with my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So what you see is an incomplete preacher. What you see is an incomplete choir and an incomplete band. And we're an incomplete church, but we're striving every day to lift up the name of Jesus. It's incomplete, but I believe if we keep serving, and if we keep giving, one day we'll come face to face with Jesus. I love pancakes. Those who know me know that I love pancakes. Now I've had to cut back on them. Dr. Salerno told me um, push back from the pancakes. But, but one day out of the week is my cheat day for pancakes. And um, I would consider myself, I'd like to say, a pancake connoisseur. Um, When my my funds are meager, I can appreciate a little stack from McDonald's. It ain't perfect, but it gets me through. Um, But there are some pancakes, and I've discovered from from some restaurants, I ain't gonna name them because y'all get focused on the wrong thing right now. But it's some pancakes where when I go there, they prepare them from scratch. And, um, and, and, and I, I, there is some preparation that goes into it. There are ingredients that they have to make the kind of pancake that I like, but I'm not that kind of chef. So, um, I discovered, and I don't even know if it's still named that, but I discovered Aunt Jemima complete. Y'all just stay with me. So, so complete means that it, everything that you need to make pancakes with is already in the box. All you got to do is just add a little water, heat up your skillet, stir it up, and cook. Now, I told you I'm a connoisseur. I wish I'm about to lose it. I told you I love pancakes, but there are times in which I can't get to the chef that does the pancakes that I truly love. And for the time being, I got to settle for my Aunt Jemima complete because I can't do what the chef can do, but it's still pancakes. But when I add my little water to my mixture, I get something. And I learned a couple weeks ago, um, Shalonda made some pancakes, and uh, it was from the complete box. And my taste buds is different. I said, it's something different. She said, that's that box of complete you keep bringing home. I said, okay, I can tell, a little different. 
but I ate it because I love pancakes. But it wasn't from the chef. It was complete for right now, but in actuality, it was incomplete. I want somebody to know that I got a little mixture. And God is just calling me to add what I have to the mixture and serve it. Now, it might look complete to you, but based upon what Paul is saying, it's incomplete. But that's not going to stop me from serving what God has given me. But I'm just not about to tell somebody that someday I am going to come face to face with the chef of my soul. And he's going to add all of the ingredients together and present me faultless before the throne. So right now, Messiah, I just want you to know that I'm incomplete. But with Christ Jesus, he completes me. And I want somebody to understand that if they don't like you and they don't appreciate you and they don't like your hair color and they don't like your figure and they don't like the figures you make and they tell them you ain't worth nothing, let somebody know that there is somebody I know who completes me. I wasn't made for you. He created me for him. I was created for his pleasure to do his work here on earth. And so my brothers and sisters, I leave that with you today. Jesus is the only one that can complete you. But while you're in this journey, keep on serving. Keep adding your little mixture. Keep adding what you have to what God has given you and serve it. Serve it in Jesus' name, knowing full completely that there will come a day when we'll be able to see the master face to face. Now I understand why they used to sing that song in my church. When I see Jesus, amen. When I see Jesus, amen. All of my sorrows, all of my trials will soon be over when I see Jesus. Amen. My brothers and sisters, until then, I'm incomplete. But with Christ on this journey, he will complete me. He will complete you. We give God praise. Love never fails. It will sustain you and keep you throughout. So hang on in there. Walk around in your incompleteness. But don't glorify it. Just understand. It's all about humility, understanding that I'm not perfect. Striving each day to get more and more like Jesus. But there will come a day when all of this will be complete. We look forward to having you join us next Sunday. Next Sunday at the same time, 10 a.m. Until then, my brothers and sisters, God bless you. God keep you. Don't forget, make sure you give to our United Negro College Fund Pledge. HBCUs are in the house this month. God bless you. God keep you. We'll see you next week. Amen.